Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So my voice is still kind of bad, uh, but otherwise I am starting to feel quite a bit better. 106 degree fever has broken. I am feeling much, much better. Uh, still not great, but compared to yesterday, I am amazing. And so today we have the new card, Shanna. And Shanna is an interesting one. Is she a great Series 5 card? Probably not. Can she be fun in several shells? Yes. I think she is more flexible than last week's card, Sauron. And I think she has some interesting build around potential. So Shanna is a four cost, two power card with the owner reveal of add a random one cost card to each location. So this has a couple of strengths and a couple of weaknesses built into it. So it can reach into locked down locations like stormed locations, sanctum sanctorum. She can add extra resources there and sneak wins away. But it can also generate cards like Bast. So if you're wanting to use her in like a Dracula shell that can absorb into a Red Skull or an Infinite she might generate a Bast and set his power to three instead and just tank that whole idea. And then she could also generate a Blade. She could also generate a Hood as the last card in a lane and then you get set with negative two power there instead of a one through three, a one through five, a one through seven. And so there are several RNG elements to her playline, but I do think she is able to be utilized in a couple of really cool ways. And so today's deck, we are running a Valkyrie Zoo. Now, this was already a decently established archetype, and I think Shanna just adds to the flexibility. So now, instead of Valkyrie being our primary winning condition, we also have the Storm and Shanna play line to be able to look like we have lost that Storm lane, and then all of a sudden we add a Squirrel with Squirrel Girl and another one cost with Shanna into that lane. We can swing it in our favor. Maybe after that, we use a Valkyrie in that other lane to have our secondary win condition where we can typically outpower the opponent because we have our Ant-Man, which would give us additional energy in that lane. We have Kazar, which would give us additional power to our one cost in that lane, Blue Marvel, to buff up our cards even further after they're set to three. Just overall, I think a fairly flexible deck. It is susceptible to Killmonger plays, but I think Shanna actually adds back into that because if they use a Killmonger early because they've identified we have several one-cost cards on the board, Janna can help fill in that gap, fill in that void, especially if there is a Kamartage and she triggers twice, you can get some decent utilization from her. Overall, the deck runs fairly well. Is it worth 6,000 tokens right now as it is? I don't think so. I think, I'll, I think there will need to be some further brewing, some further optimization, and maybe a few additional cards released before she is truly worth buying. But if you happen to pull her, if you happen to just really like her card, her kit, her character, then I do think she is viable to play right now and is fairly fun. And so let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games and I'll show you how to navigate it. All right, first up we have Glynn. The first location is the hub and it gives us a Kazar, which is beautiful. Uh, we, we can potentially have two Kazars now, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and we already have our other Kazar too. So, beautiful drop from the hub. We do play our Nightcrawler first. Jodenheim's gonna be tough. Uh, it's probably a key location for us to storm unless this last location is something that we really need to change. I'm gonna go ahead and armor the far left lane. I think if they're running Sunspot, they probably run their own armor. And so they might armor this right. No, they do an Ebony Maul. Interesting, very interesting. And so the last location is the rickety bridge. And so that means that these are both going to die. And so I'm going to go ahead and just play our mojo. Next turn, we will storm the rickety bridge location. They use a Cosmo into the far left. Um, both of these, these cards, their one cost resources get destroyed. We're going to go ahead and storm the rickety bridge. We do have our squirrel girl. I don't know that we drop it just yet, though. I think we save it. I would like to drop one of the Kazars, but Storm is going to allow us to push power into the rickety bridge, where it's going to be difficult for them to. And so they drop a White Queen. I'm really confused uh, as to what Glenn is running here. We're going to go ahead and push our Blue Marvel into the Flooded Lane. If we need more power or more reach, we have our Nightcrawler we can move over. We have our Squirrel Girl, our Debris that we can use to push some additional resources over into that location. And we're fighting to win probably the Flooded Lane and the Hub. Uh, just because Jodenheim, with us wanting to flood the board, would hurt us, I think, more than help us. And so our Blue Marvel does come down. They have a Maximus in the hub. The Scorpion comes down in the flood lane, but that is not quite enough. 
I think it comes down to us winning the hub and the flooded lane. I don't know that this does it. We're going to do Shayna. That's going to push a one cost here, here, and here. We could get lucky and they could be valuable one cost, but I think most likely we lose uh, just because the Maximus is such a big resource. Wow. I was not expecting the retreat there, but we do get the retreat. We are going to go ahead and take that. We will jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Alex Roy Stone. And the first location is Project Pegasus. I'm going to go a little bit easy. I'm just going to do Iceman and Armor for now. Uh, we don't want to flood all of our cards onto the board. Wow. And they leech us on turn one, which I always have a little bit of an issue with. Using leech any other turn than turn five into a turn six leader just feels kind of lackluster. You have so many additional turns to draw into resources that you end up not really getting as much benefit out of the leech as you would have otherwise. And so the rickety bridge comes down. We're going to go ahead and use our storm into the rickety bridge. We might go with a double debris. Uh, we still have in our in our deck Kazar and Blue Marvel, and we also have Shayna, so we could double on reveal it here. We could double on reveal both of them. And so they use an Electro. If they were wanting to go something like a, a Doc Ock, that's not going to be as great now. If they wanted to go something like a Galactus, they could do it this turn, but this would be the last turn that they could do it. So I think because of that, I'm going to go ahead and drop our Kazar into the Flooded Lane just in case they go Galactus. Um, we want to make sure that we have the lead and the win before this lane gets locked down. And then next turn, we could go double debris. That's going to fill up the rest of this location. Those rocks are going to be one power each. And so then it would cap out this location as well. And so uh, more ideally, we could get our blue marvel and then go double debris. Wow. So they go with a null. And so they were going with a, a deck built around the featured location, it appears. And so here I'm going to go with the double debris. I'm going to go Ant-Man in Project Pegasus. And that will at least give us a, a little bit bigger of a power push in the Project Pegasus lane. Um, if we draw into our Blue Marvel next turn, that's fantastic. Wow, the Doc Ock comes down, but we only have one card in our hand, which is the Valkyrie. Nothing that they could use for a Shang-Chi, nothing that they could use to buff up their Null higher than what it already is. So now if they do have a Killmonger, then of course they will win with the Null. They'll wipe out just about all of our power on the board. But I think otherwise, they built their deck very, very drastically around this location. And so if they have a big power push in Project, in Project Pegasus, maybe they can win that way. But we are going to go ahead and just play our Nightcrawler onto the board and we are going to see what happens. And so they did snap. I don't know what they snapped over, but I'm going to let it play out. They do an America Chavez. We tie in Project Pegasus. We win by eight in the flooded lane and we lose in Kamartage by just one because of the Nightcrawler and the Khazar buffing it up. And so we are able to just barely find our win and we will absolutely take it. It feels like maybe they were trying to scare us off, uh, but knowing that this was a Galactus Null style deck, I, I think it was a bluff too little too late. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Lights Out Ace. From the hub, we get Jubilee. We do have our Storm and our Valkyrie. If we can draw into Shanna, then that's fantastic, especially with the kill location because Shanna and Squirrel Girl has a phenomenal synergy with Storm by being able to push those cards into those hard to reach locations that otherwise were blocked off or limited. We're going to go ahead and Storm the, the hub location instead of Grand Central. I originally thought we would do Grand Central, uh, but uh, since we already have two cards in the hub and the last one is just okay, um, I want to create space and keep space just in case we need to do Shanna, Squirrel Girl. We'll be able to push those regardless. And so here we're going to do a, a Kazar um, for turn five. Maybe we do Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel. Okay. So they use a Green Goblin, which does kind of hurt this lane. But we have Valkyrie that will that will right size it. it it'll set it back to the right level. Uh, we now have Shanna as well. So we could push more power here or here if we felt like we needed to. I think we're going to lean into the Blue Marvel play to buff both of these lanes up a little bit. And then as long as we can win the Grand Central location, then we can win the game. Now, the issue with Valkyrie in this game, Dracula is a low tempo play. It typically gives up that first turn play for that benefit because he's a zero power play. And so we are going to have initiative going into the last turn of the game. And so Valkyrie is much less impactful here. Wow, the Spider-Man comes down and uh, it all comes down to what we pull in here. And we pull into Valkyrie, which is big 
because it sets our Green Goblin from negative three to a positive four. And right now we are winning in the flooded location. Right now they're losing here by five. And I think it all comes down to that pool in the kiln location. We're going to go ahead and gamble. It's only for one additional cube. We're going to stick this one out. They can only play one card here. So they are going to have four cards left in their hand at the end of this turn for Dracula to potentially pull into. They're not going to be able to flood the board like they would have wanted to. So the Spider-Man was a fantastic counter for it. And so the Spider-Man was a fantastic tech counter to make sure that we couldn't play on this last turn. Unfortunately for them, Grand Central pulled into our Valkyrie. Again, not a Shanna game, unfortunately. We had it. It would have been good to push some power into the kill location, especially alongside a Squirrel Girl on that last turn, just to give us a lot of value over there. But it didn't pan out. We are going to go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Selenar. The first location is the Dark Dimension, so we're going to be able to hide some of our cards there. Uh, so we could always hide a Shanna that's going to push some additional resources out onto the board. Uh, but I think starting off, we're going to hide our Ant-Man. And then I'll go ahead and play Armor to follow it up. We draw into the Korg's Rock, the, the rock that Korg sent us immediately. Always a rough draw. Hopefully they drew back into their, into their rock with Daily Bugle, but they could have drawn into Storm or something else. We're going to Storm the Titan location. Now, I think they probably play into Daily Bugle if they play here. And my thought process was with them having Ghost Rider, this is probably a Zabu Flood style deck. And so that would typically have several six cost cards. And since we don't have any six cost cards, we're going to get more benefit by taking away that location because it's going to take away some of the benefit that they get out of it. I'm going to go ahead and drop our Kazar, Kazar into the flooded location. Uh, we do have our Squirrel Girl, so we'll be able to push some additional power there. Next turn, we can drop our Blue Marvel and maybe we get Shanna on the last turn. We can do a Shanna and a Squirrel Girl to cap out the flooded location. They, they do play a big Hawk. Uh, that is an awfully big hawk you have there, sir. And so they do have us beaten in the flooded location right now. I think we're going to play Blue Marvel. We can always do Shanna and Squirrel Girl next turn. That pushes more power, quite a bit more power here. And it's going to help us fill up this lane and this one. I almost want to snap back against Selenar, but I haven't been able to get Shanna to actually play in the games that we've recorded. And so I, I'm just going to play it cautiously here. They play a Spider-Man into the Daily Bugle. Uh, we do drop blue marvel so it right now if i was them i would be really excited that we just that we just countered their daily bugle lane but we have a shanna we have a squirrel girl <sighs> my only issue my only downside my only deficit here is that we're not going to get the one cost at the extra one cost here from shanna but i do think we want the extra one cost here and here and so i'm actually pretty confident blue marvel will buff them up by one so that that minimum <clears throat> even if this one is a zero and a one we should get at least the at least the plus three in the flooded lane we get a little bit of extra value in the daily bugle which if i was selenar i would play something really small there just to get the slight advantage and then i would invest the rest into the dark dimension so we are going to go with the shanna in game play oh my goodness no selenar why <laughs> i just want to see shanna play why would you do this to us we are going to go ahead and jump over into the next one. We are going to get Shanna to play before we end this video. All right, next up we have Psych 77. The first location is the throne room. We don't have any really tall or really powerful cards. So most likely we will storm that location. And then actually the, <laughs> the middle location is Mirror Dimension, which is one of my favorite play lines with Storm because it can potentially copy the, that Storm or Flooded location. And so we do have Shanna that's beautiful with the storm combo, especially if there are two storms. And so we're going to go ahead and we will storm the throne room on three. And then depending on what mirror dimension copies into, uh, we can kind of go from there. I almost want to snap here, but I also want to let this game play out. I want to be able to drop and use Shanna and see it actually trigger. So the zero comes down, it zeroes out their Ebony Maw, which is a big resource for them over there. Um, but it is only going to be seven power can we beat 10 power in that lane? I don't know. The flooded location does get copied by the mirror dimension, which is beautiful. One of my absolute favorite plays. We're going to go ahead and play uh, Kazar. That will buff up whatever card we drop with our Shanna. Next turn, we can actually still play cards into this middle location, even though it says this is the last turn. 
that's not exactly true because of the way the mirror dimension copies it's after the turn starts and so then we get one additional turn to play into that lane from the flooded location wow they pull into our card with mojo so a debris would actually be beautiful here enforcing this lane to be fully capped out now the players does lock down this lane oh wow and then there speak of the speak of the devil we get debris uh beautiful so if we do a one power here and a one power here that is going to be six extra power which only puts us at 14 unfortunately it is not quite enough the debris play here is not quite enough to win us it would we would still lose this lane by one uh by a measly mere one power we would lose this lane so, so i think we're gonna go with ant-man and shanna in the middle flooded location we do have valkyrie so if we don't have initiative going into that last turn which we shouldn't then we should be able to right size their cards with valkyrie we have the iceman to play one additional card over there no, we're actually going to go with this play line instead. We're going to push our Ant-Man into the raft. I think that is where we're going to need to push our power into. Never mind. <laughs> we're going to pull that Ant-Man back over. Uh, their arrow does force us into playing that card over there. Oh, no, we get the negative hood in the flooded lane. How awful is that? We definitely lose the flooded location now. But we get the sunspot in the raft, which is decent. We get zero as well, so the next card that we play is zeroed out. We have to be mindful of that in the, the order of the plays here. So we're going to play the demon. He gets zeroed out. Oh, no. Oh, man. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, <sighs> dropping the demon after Valkyrie would have been nice. We're going to do demon just for the giggles. He is going to get set to three from Valkyrie. Um, if they don't fill up this location, then we do get the win in the flooded lane. If they do fill it up, then we lose. So I th it all comes down to this last play. We're going we're gonna to let this one play out. Uh, I think we win. I think they do a big, powerful drop. The Red Skull is not going to be enough. And it's actually really good for our lane because we set that Red Skull to three. And then he still buffs up our cards by two. Plus, Kazar buffs up our one costs even further. And so even though they pulled our cards back in with the Ant-Man, we do still find our win. And with that one, we finally get a Shanna interaction. Not that we weren't wanting to play her, it's just that retreats were happening before we were able to. And so overall, the list feels okay. I don't know if this is the final location that we find her. I know that she will get some additional resources or buffs as we get more cards released. But as of right now, it feels like a decent shell for both Valkyrie, Storm, Shanna, Kazar. It works decently for what it is. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any ideas for Shanna, let me know in the comment section down below and I'd be more than happy to try them out. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.